disengagement. If the narcissist was honest, disengagement most commonly occurs with regard to the intimate partner primary source, but it can apply to the intimate partner secondary source, dirty little secret, or a non-intimate secondary source. However, it is the person that is the spouse, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the partner, the cohab, in a romantic situation who is most likely to be disengaged from. That person is the intimate partner primary source. Invariably, when you're disengaged from, the narcissist doesn't tell you, and you find out as a consequence of seeing the narcissist with somebody else or being told that the narcissist has been spotted canoodling with some mysterious redhead. Sometimes you are told that it's over, and you're given half-baked or nonsensical explanations as to why that has occurred. But what if the narcissist was actually honest with you? Of course, a lesser or mid-range narcissist can't be honest with you because they don't know what they are and they don't know the real reasons as to why they're doing what they're doing. They don't understand that the disengagement has occurred for one of the five disengagement triggers. With the greater or the ultra, we know full well why we're getting rid of you, why we're disengaging from you, because of one of those five triggers has occurred. But we're not going to tell you that, not unless telling you serves a purpose. No, ordinarily, we will not give you any explanation, because we have no sense of accountability towards you and no emotional empathy, or we will give you an alternative explanation in order to assert control over you and gain fuel. But if the narcissist was honest with regard to disengagement and wrote a letter to the victim, what would that letter read? Well, now you can find out. Dear victim, well, wasn't that the roller coaster ride? Don't look so miserable. At least you are getting a letter. The last four never got anything at this stage. I just disappeared. And the first they knew that I was no longer interested in them was when they saw me parading my new acquisition. Still, they brought it on themselves, or at least that is what I keep telling myself, because, after all, nothing is my fault, is it? So, here is your letter. Yes, this is a dear John letter, a missive designed to tell you that our entanglement is now at an end. For now, more on that later. And that I am now romantically involved with somebody else. Just as an aside, did you know that they originated from letters sent to soldiers by their unfaithful wives? Yes, brave Johnny was out there fighting the good fight whilst his missus was shacked up with Johnny come lately and she decided that rather than wait for Johnny to come home from the front, she would choose Johnny come lately who was stationed in her hometown. It seems our kind didn't even suspend operations because of World War Two. Anyway, I digress. Yes, this letter is to tell you that you and I are no more. The simple reason is, you are no use to me any more. I know it seems damned unfair, but my needs are all that matter, you see. You gave it a good shot, I'll give you that, I suppose. You lasted longer than the one before, whatever her name was. Something to be proud of, I guess. There haven't been many who have held on to me as long as you have. I know in between the tears and the confusion when you read this letter, you'll be wondering why on earth have I done this after everything that you have done for me. You see, it is exactly that kind of selfish thinking that put a hex on you and me. If you'd spent more time thinking about me and my needs, then we wouldn't be in this position. Well, actually, we probably would, because so far, no matter what anybody has tried whatever they've tried to do i've always found them to be lacking eventually and i've had my head turned by somebody else it always seems to happen and it cannot be my fault can it i don't do anything wrong i mean i chased you made you feel special and did all the tickling the hair twirling and the sweet nothings you got a good time come on you have to admit it Oh, I know things went sour afterwards, but I've already written to you about that. Do you have to go on about that? There you go again. Me, me, me. Never thought for how I might feel. Have you any idea what it's like needing to rely on somebody else to validate your existence? Oh, you do? Well, that makes it worse, actually, if you do know. Why didn't you do something about it? Anyway, I don't have time to go into all of that now. I dare say you're wondering... 
why I've chosen someone now rather than try and work things out with you or at the very least agree to an amicable split before looking for a new victim? Well, it's a fair question, I suppose. I have had the new person lined up for a while. You just weren't doing it for me anymore and I had to make sure my needs were met. So whilst you waited for me to come home, dinner in the oven or dealt with the children again on your own as I was always away on a business trip, I was busy choosing her and seducing her. She's a right cracker, going to give me lots of emotional attention, better than you ever did. Oh, don't start with the tears. No, actually, carry on. That makes me feel better when you cry. I could list all the things that she is and which you are not, but I can't be bothered to do it now. I'm too excited about spending time with my new toy, um, I, I mean partner. Don't worry, though. I will triangulate you with her at some point, so you can find out all about why I chose her. And we may as well have a little competition where I pit you and her against one another and I sit back and choose a winner. That's what you get to do when you're as brilliant as me. So we can save the analysis about her for another time. I've left you with a load of debt. Nothing to do with me as everything is in your name. But I suppose it will give you something to concentrate on alongside wondering what has just happened. I'm going to make a few household items too. They are mine after all, so I'm taking them, and I need to make sure that my new home has everything. I imagine you'll muddle through somehow, not that I care, of course, but I might pretend to care if you give me the reaction that I'm after. I dare say you think that I'm cold-hearted and callous and a bastard, but you have to understand, uh, this is your fault and not mine. If you had just tried harder to please me and kept me happy, then I wouldn't have had to look elsewhere. You made me have this affair because you're selfish and you don't think about me. It's no point in digging out that ridiculous list you've kept of everything that you've supposedly done for me. I know for a fact that it's made up, but then you are something of a fantasist after all. At least, that is what I've been telling all our friends and families, plus the neighbours. Oh, and your boss and the chap at the corner shop. Well, I'm not having you spreading lies about me by saying I've gone off with somebody young with some young bit of stuff leaving you in a half-empty house with no income load of debt and the kids to look after. That would make me look bad, and I've got a reputation to maintain. Don't even think about telling tales. Nobody will believe you. I've made sure of that, and I will see the kids when I can be bothered. But when I do decide to bother my backside, you'd better not start playing silly buggers, or I'll have you in court, and the judge and everyone else will know about your drinking and drug problems. It's no good pretending you don't have them. I know you do. Or, at least, I'll make it seem like you do. Well, I think that's everything. I've left a few bits and bobs in case I want to come back and torment you by haggling over a toaster and that collection of coloured vinyl records. Don't think about calling me or hassling me. People already think that you're a complete nut job. So, this is it. As I mentioned, or at least I am telling you, it's over, so you know. See? I am considerate after all. I would say goodbye, but this is more like au revoir, because I will be coming back, and I will do so as and when I choose to effect that. So, ultimately, I'm getting rid of you, because no matter how hard you tried, and I recognise that you did all those wonderful things for me, Ultimately, they weren't good enough, because it's me that gets to decide, and I place the highest standards, ones which actually are unattainable for you. And now, I've got somebody else, so I don't need you for the moment. So, as I wrote, it's au revoir. I'll see you later, but not too soon, yes? Thanks for nothing. The Narcissist. <laughs>